20 stupid Minecraft things that actually work. Minecraft is a game where you can do almost anything, so sometimes even the weirdest ideas pan out. So today, here are the features and tricks that are just crazy enough to work. And hey, the YouTube overlords wanted to challenge you to a reaction test. Average reaction time is 215 milliseconds, so to test yours, whack that red sub button when you see it on screen. It's free, and it helps out a ton. Ready? Go. Number 1. If you're tired of placing pumpkins, then don't worry, dispensers will do it for you. The reason this works is based off a snow golem trick. But instead of having the pumpkin set up on top of two snow blocks, you have those two snow blocks a little further off where it actually can't build a golem. There are plenty of different directions and configurations where this can work, but as soon as you find one, then it's entirely possible to get your pumpkins placed without having to do the right clicking yourself. Is there any point to it? Not that I can think of. And honestly, it's probably a smarter option to have this do the intended method of actually having auto golems built. Number 2. Item duping is nothing new to Minecraft, but if you're looking to add that little extra something on top of your floors, then you can do it through the help of rail and carpet duping. See, by using slime blocks, pistons, and speed, it's actually possible to duplicate these flat hitbox items. So if you yourself find that you're just tired of getting all the rails necessary for your Space Mountain remake, or all the carpets necessary to deck out your floors, then this might just be an option. Although at this point, I don't know why you wouldn't just use a more generic form of item duplication to get all the materials necessary, instead of just getting the final product. Number 3. Sometimes in Minecraft, you don't need to be carrying around a lot of levels, but since there's no way to put that EXP into, I don't know, a bottle, then fortunately there is still an option that's even weirder. When you take out an item from smelting in a furnace, you get a little bit of EXP. But what's interesting about that feature is that it doesn't just give you the EXP for that item, it gives you EXP for every item smelted up until that point. Meaning that using furnaces, you can essentially create EXP batteries on demand. And when you can store more EXP than you get from the dragon fight in one of these, I think we got an oversight. Number 4. Crawling really isn't meant to be a fast activity, but through the help of certain enchantments and effects, you're able to turn this into one of the fastest modes of travel in the game. By combining Depth Strider, Soul Speed, Dolphin's Grace, and Speed 2 all into one package, it's entirely possible for a player to travel hundreds of thousands of blocks with ease. And while I thought this was patched out back in the snapshots of 1.16, as it turns out, in recent versions, if you have enough willpower, you're able to get just that same speed matched. And if your computer can handle it, it's certainly a sight to see. Number 5. If you take the time to study a soul sand block, you'll notice that it's not a full block. Rather, it's just a hair short of being a full block size. And while most of the time that's imperceptible, when you use a minecart, it gets immediately noticeable. The reason being is that if you partner these two concepts together, you'll notice that it's possible to face through solid ground. What happens is that if you have a rail placed beneath a soul sand and then a minecart rolls on top of the stack, the cart will snap down to the rail below and phase you through the soul sand. So if you want to add this to your roller coasters, I guess why not? Number 6. I don't know about you, but sea pickles don't get a lot of use in my Minecraft world. That is, until I found out that they're surprisingly helpful with storage of all things. By placing two waterlogged pickles into your item stream, you're able to redirect the flow of items for sorting without running into issues like bottlenecking. That means these things are extremely useful for storing items into hoppers that come from two different opposite water streams. And since the flow of the system doesn't disrupt, you can still get the good speed that comes from one of these machines. So even though I have no clue how this got figured out, it's still going to do wonders for your item sorting system. Number 7. Boats and minecarts are often seen as polar opposites when it comes to Minecraft travel. Obviously, one's for the ocean, the other's for land. But what you might not know is that there's something great when you put both of these two together. By managing to get a boat inside of a minecart, you not only get a freak of nature, but you can also ride the boat inside the minecart and gain loads of momentum. Which sure enough means that you can create rail systems that require no powered rails. This is worth building anyway for just how weird it looks, but as soon as you get inside, it's actually surprising how powerful one of these can be. And that's gotta make it my favorite form of travel. Number 8. Unless you're a rabbit, foxes in Minecraft seem pretty adorable. But that's only because you haven't seen them at full force yet. Sure enough, it's entirely possible for the fox to hold a sword in its mouth and completely use it. And while this not only makes for a really solid Zashian cosplay, it can also be really beneficial because you can use the fox with a fire aspect sword to make cooked chicken farms. Truly, you can't judge a book by its cover. So if you see one of these holding a sword, you might want to back away, or at the very least, keep your chickens in the coop. Number 9. Bubble elevators are great, but they're not always a joy to build. I mean, having to place the full water source blocks all the way up is a pain in the brain. So, to save that hassle, you can instead place one water source block at the top and then use kelp of all things to turn the rest of them into water source blocks. 
After destroying the kelp and placing a soul sand on the bottom, just like that, you got a perfectly functioning bubble elevator without all the tedium of heading to the nearby lake to fuel it up. And hey, you even get to keep the kelp for more elevators in the future. It's a win-win. Number 10. When you think of a ladder, you're probably imagining something like this. Or this. But definitely not this. But as it turns out, in Minecraft, you're able to build a functioning cake ladder. Which is a weird sentence in its own right, but it's even stranger how well this thing works. In the past, when we talked about what were the fastest ways to reach the top of Minecraft, this won against a number of different contenders, including regular ladders. So if you got the urge to do some baking, there's frankly no reason you shouldn't try one of these in your world. Number 11. Activating a regeneration beacon in your world is a huge flex. But did you know that you can actually get more out of it if you deactivate it? Seriously, because of a bug that prevents the beacons from giving the full speed regen, it's actually faster to regenerate your health by turning on and back off the beacon. While a normal beacon can take you from 1 HP up to the full 20 in 1 minute and 12 seconds, a modified beacon can do the same in about 51. Which I think I'm right in saying is downright stupid. But until Mojang assesses this bug, this is definitely the way to handle it. Number 12. Villagers don't seem like a particularly aggressive bunch, but surprisingly, through the use of dispensers, you can actually put armor and mob heads onto villagers. Now, only the mob heads make a visual difference, but even if you don't see the armor equipped, it sure is gonna act like it is. That's right, even though you don't see it, the armor will still provide the stats to the villager. I'm surprised there's that much of a feature here that just lies underneath the surface. So if villagers wearing proper armor ever gets added in in a later update, you'll remember that in the past, you saw it here first. Number 13. Water in the nether doesn't mix, but hey, that's not a surprise to anyone. Although, for some reason, when you put the water inside of a hot metal cauldron, all of a sudden it doesn't evaporate. Now, while I don't understand the logistics of it, it is entirely possible to place your water cauldron inside of your nether base and completely extinguish yourself from any and all fires. Well, sure, it's not as versatile as a full water source block in the overworld, and to place as dry as the nether, you're willing to take what you can get. Especially if you just caught a blaze's fireball five seconds ago. Number 14. While logs and leaf blocks might seem pretty primitive, they're actually fully capable of transmitting redstone signals. You see, when you have a leaf block, it has a tag in its data that remembers just how far away it is from the nearest log. And while this is meant to determine when the leaves should decay, it actually still exists when the leaves are placed by the player. And when that distance tag gets updated, it can actually get detected by an observer. By adding a log into the proximity of leaves in an area, you can send a wave effect of redstone transmitting through observers and leaves. And if you got a love for the technical side of Minecraft, then you can definitely see how this could be applied. Number 15. Most of the time, locking a chest in Minecraft is a luxury that only creative map makers have. That is, until you add our furry friends into the equation. By having your cat sit on top of a chest, it is impossible to open up the thing. And what's even better is that you can kind of hide this system by having a piston push a non-solid block on top of the chest. That way, if your friend's trying to open up your chest to steal your valuables, at least your feline companion's gonna keep it safe. They're not exactly ferocious lions by appearance, but sure enough, they still can do the job just all right. Number 16. The word waterlogging doesn't exactly sound like speed, which is why it's even weirder that if you submerge a ladder, it's actually faster than a normal ladder. Sure enough, if you get the rungs of a ladder wet with a bit of water, you can actually sail up them in speeds that put the regular ladders to shame. My guess is that this is some form of combination of swimming and climbing, but I don't know, it still doesn't make any sense to me. But hey, if you're trying to make your non-cake ladders seem a little faster, then this is definitely the way to beef them up, and at least add some form of speed back into the equation. Number 17. Now, a floating roller coaster sounds like a dream, but most of the time that you see it, it's just an illusion. But to add a little bit of magic to reality, if you place a rail on top of a trap door and then flip them down, the rails won't pop off. But instead, they can still be ridden, meaning you're fully capable of taking a minecart track right down one of these things and have some part of it hanging off of a ledge. So if you're trying to have a floating minecart without the help of creative mode, this might be the closest you're gonna get. And as long as you don't update it by doing anything other than flipping that trap door, it's gonna stay there long enough for you to ride it off into the sunset. Number 18. Saplings, like many other things in Minecraft, age on a system called Random Tick. And since we're able to detect when those saplings are aging, it means that saplings can technically give random redstone signals. So if you're trying to add random outputs into your Minecraft redstone circuit, this is a way to do it. And if you want a higher frequency of random outputs, just put down more saplings. For a pretty bare bones concept, you're able to get a surprising amount of power out of one of these. And in the end, who would have thought that a little bundle of leaves and sticks would be as powerful as this whole circuit? Number 19. 
If you've played Minecraft for more than a day, then you're well and aware that water can break your fall. But what's surprising to know is that any amount of water can break your fall. So surely enough, whether it's a puddle or an entire ocean, you're still gonna get your legs saved just the same. Although for some reason, cauldrons don't save your fall, but they still have more water than any other option I'm seeing here. Why this happens, I just can't say. But hey, who's ever said Minecraft logic made any sense in the first place? Just know that if you got your choice of what to land in, any of these are gonna work, but stay away from this one. Number 20. If you're trying to defend your local village, then the doors are the first thing you gotta watch. But if you're not looking to spend all the materials on ironclad doors to protect them, then don't worry, there's a way simpler option. Sure enough, all you gotta do is just invert the door and all of a sudden, the zombie doesn't know what to do with it. An easy way to check if a zombie can break in is by hitting F3, looking at the door, and seeing if it says open true. But as you can see with the inverted ones, you don't see that same tag. Meaning if you want to keep the villagers safe, you just gotta look at it from an opposite point of view. Literally. And with that, dumb down that sub button below and have a good one. All right.